is there something about marble? Because you actually work quite a bit with marble. Um, you've also experimented with other kind of stones as well. Um, is, what, what is it about that particular material that you are so drawn to? What I like about marble is that uh, uh, when you think of it in a more design furniture sense, it's your, your instincts to think it's hard, it's durable, it's, it's kind of used in construction and buildings and stuff. Yeah. But my experience working with it, uh, especially with certain like, like more pointier ed- uh, forms with edges, very brittle, very fragile, and also the I, I do uh, the entire process of sculpting using handheld tools. Uh, yeah, so there is a lot of time being spent with the material. And uh, and there's a quality to it that I feel like it's uh, vulnerable, and in the it also there's uh, there's nothing that uh, it it can't hide any flaws that it has if there's a dent or scratch. Yeah, compared to like say other mediums like. Uh, oil painting and stuff like that you build up layers upon layers so like it is this that like stripped down there's no there's no room for error there's no masking there's an the element that's interesting to me i think what you said just now about like you know the vulnerability in the material you know um that that potential like how it could be quite unforgiving is is that can we say that also, like, of the material? So that is something that you are um, quite attracted to? Yeah, and, uh, like, I spent, like, months, uh, weeks, days just working on pieces. So uh, there's, like, it's kind of like a forming a relationship with it. And certain shapes, like, the, like, for example, in the show, there's a, teardrop shape so on yeah so when when in the process of making these very uh fragile works it demands like full focus attention and patience that i cannot rush i can only do it slowly carefully that is the energy that i uh that you put into the making that when it's completed i still kind of see it in the same way, yeah. I think I like what you are saying about, you know, it's almost like forming some form of a relationship with the material. Um, I think I read in your artist bio as well that you like to explore, right, like the spirit, you know, of the of the medium. It's almost like unveiling like a certain character or, or the spirit, you know, within it. Um, could you share a bit more about, like... Um, how it's like for you, like how the process is, is it very different, you know, every time you work on a different, you know, a different medium or a different block or slab of of that medium? To me, uh, like, like before the stone carving, so there's uh, like a long part of my process is just like thinking and like, uh, like maybe reading, listening, just like general stuff, yeah. But uh, it, I say I would say it starts from like sketches and then uh, making prototypes. But it, I don't specifically like attach like like when I make like uh like like styrofoam figures. Like, I don't attach it to any project or concept. Like it's kind of just a free exploration of what I'm thinking, what I what I had drawn. Yeah, so like from time to time I'll look at the like all of the stuff that I have and think about it. So the I for this show some of the these spherical forms I've actually done for a while, maybe a year ago, maybe more, yeah. But the uh, to me, what's interesting is uh, finding a way to present them. Uh, 
uh, putting them in into certain situation that that evokes like certain feelings. Yeah. So when I first thought about the first artwork, that's uh the one with the mesh net. So from then on, it it's like a a, a rolling stone. That's then the rest came more easily. I began to like like look for like similarities and in, in tools that are uh like not that are meant to hold but then there's that possibility of failure. Yeah. So you were talking about um situations and I think it's also something that you have always kind of been exploring, right? Even in earlier bodies of work. So for this particular show to stay tender, um, what sort of situations were you exploring and have they evolved in um, in any way from what you from situations that you were exploring earlier on? I think the uh, very unique thing about uh, this show at this space is like I have the uh, the luxury of time like to visit the the previous shows like over the past year so. I feel that each show you know inform about the space and and like my final presentation is quite uh, different from what I had initially proposed yeah. so like I kind of I would say it's more experimental and more uh just like reacting it to the space kind of in real time when setting up yeah like testing out different things and trying new things when plans uh like like some of the my plan didn't work i've always been interested in like uh objects yeah relationship with each other and 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 when you involve like a uh, elements of presentation like the floor the pedestal uh on a shelf on against a wall is it also forms another kind of relationship that uh that there's that slight tension that uh, or like when people walk that slight breeze that kind of affects yeah the, the sense of it then maybe you can share a bit more about um, for this particular show. You started incorporating quite a lot of found objects, and these objects are have quite a strong, very visible sort of presence. Um, could you share like um, what kind of inspired you to you know, work with these found objects, and how did you kind of pair them um, with your sculptural works? Yeah. So. Uh... I really like like the everydayness of some of the objects like like there's chopsticks and and like the mesh net that I saw from uh like supermarket when they sell garlic in a row and and like for me like some of the uh tools the clans and stuff are kind of like common objects in uh my workshop yeah so uh I feel like like with this found objects it it creates a uh like situation and relationship that that's that might be more relatable compared to anything that's custom or any structures that that's made just for the sculptures yeah so that in this show uh like I really uh like that the uh I was influenced by the like how experimental the the previous shows were and like it kind there's a ease to it that that was really inspiring for me so uh in this when uh in the process of when I was planning so I just began to like observe like everyday life that's how i began like to look at the the nets that contains the garlic and like there's a work there that's uh that involves this 
acrylic tube and the work that's kind of held up by friction inside. So in uh, that scenario uh, that, that inspired it was like, like there's a lot of times when uh, you drink bubble tea and the pearl will be stuck inside a straw. So, so it's little moments like that. Then when I think about uh, like like when I visit other shows, there's a lot of mountings that involve magnets or and scotch tape and stuff. It's just objects that are that that you might not think further, but then when it interacts with the form, it creates this like unique situations. Yeah. I think um, earlier on when we were having a chat about the show, you were sharing about how the curation or the placement of, of the works was very much in response to um, the gallery space itself. Um, and you said also like um, there was some evolution, I guess, like, you know, in, in deciding how the placement were as compared to what you have done previously. Maybe you can share a bit more about how it was like setting up for the show and then the sort of decisions that you needed to make. Yeah, so we set up the show over a few days. So the first day is just laying everything out and like like slowly uh, thinking about the different possibilities. Yeah, so uh, yeah, there are, when it's all laid out on the floor, I think uh, there's when we realize that that with certain works that the when it's elevated it creates like it heightens the senses a bit more, especially uh, the ones that that uh, is mounted with the chopsticks. Yeah. So and and the thing about uh, like lifting off the floor like it, it it changes like how how the eye approaches like so so looking down or looking upwards and it i think it speaks to like a different feeling so there's a i would say there's more of a sense of security when it's on the floor but like the the stakes are not that high. Then when certain works that when you suspend, there is that tension there that that like you know it's supposed to be secure, but then the that 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 lingering fear and anxiety, that subtleness of it is still very interesting to me. Okay, I think maybe I'm I'm quite curious about um the forms that you work with. Um, you work quite a lot with geometric forms and then you've also shared about how mathematical it can be or how methodological it can be, you know, like the process of um, creating your works. Um, could you share a bit more about um, the forms that, that you are drawn to? Um, how do you pick which forms to create or work with for a show? Yeah, so uh, my earlier works, uh, I did do some like more figurative stuff and so as time goes on, I feel like I'm more uh, drawn to geometric shapes and stuff and it's, a, it's this kind of uh, sculptural language that I've, I, I feel like I've, I've becoming more and more comfortable with them and I relate a lot to it like the uh, in a way it's kind of a abstract expression yeah yeah but it's geometric it's mechanical but at the same time it feels still feels very human and relatable in and especially uh, when when the presentation involves like a certain like tension to it, then that there's that that sensibility, that that feeling, yeah. 
I think you've mentioned um, tension quite a bit. And I feel like maybe at this point in time, it's also quite um, good to kind of actually look at, you know, what inspired the title of, of the exhibition. So I was like reading up about, you know, this, this show. And, um, so the title for the show comes from a quote from Ocean Wong's novel On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous. So I'll just read out the quote. To stay tender, the weight of your life cannot lean on your bones. Um, could you share why did you select this quote for, for this exhibition? Yeah, so uh, like part of my uh, just habit, I guess, like I, uh, I like kept a collection of like just quotes and things like from different places. So uh, like, I think in the same way that I'm, I'm drawn to like geometric as a sculptural language, like the, like in terms of literature, like the, I have like this collection of, of like quotes about animals. So like I, I think like some of my previous work I've referenced like Moth and Wills and yeah, so like, yeah, so in it's always in 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 the writing that 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 I find that is very that I think it the the words are constructed in such a way that that paints a picture that's beyond these animals. So uh, going back to uh, the court, uh, it's it uh, it was about like describing how like uh when cows when when they are farmed for their meat so to stay tender they must be kept in tiny boxes so that they do not move so much so i i took a photo of this page quite a while back yeah so uh at the time it reminds me of how I pack my work for transportations. I custom made these boxes that are made to size that that barely fits the work with not much gap and then stuff full with foam and they don't move at all inside. So like like this it it really uh speaks to me in a way that the because my a lot of my works is about uh, mobility, immobility, and then when I pack them, they are, uh, there's a contrast, that, that security inside. Yeah, so uh, I've, like, I've always, like, like, when I think every time I make my boxes or, like, as in when I'm packing the works, I kind of, it just brings me back to uh, this description of how the cows were kept. Yeah, so when I was talking to the curator about possible titles for the show, in the beginning, I sent over a list that's more mechanical terms like <laughs> like like holding, withholding, restraint, tolerance, constraint, just uh, words are more more rigid mecha mechanical engineered yeah so but in a way it's also about about stillness and and being placed in in such a way yeah so after a while i sent her the photo yeah because like like what we discussed it, it brings me back to to that very quote as well. So yeah, so that there's that that difference between like the between like resistance tolerance and then to stay tender. But then to me the works are very much the same things that, that like because like to to resist the gravity, the the uh friction that yeah. So in that situation it's very delicate, very tender, yeah. I think it's a very beautiful quote and um, to stay tender, I think really kind of encapsulates a lot of the, of that, you know, that delicate balance 
um, that we see in, in your works, um, it may seem like a bit of irony, right? You know, but that, that, that I, I think the, the text really brings out, you know, the tension that is created. Um, you were talking about like gravity and I think we had also that chat, right? Like, you know, how gravity is very present, but um, you resist gravity, but you also cannot deny the presence of gravity. And, and for some of the works, it's also very much grounded in that sense. Um, I was thinking of the piece that is that's at that corner and then secured with like a, a piece of like scotch tape. <laughs> yeah, so I, I do feel like it does resonate, you know, with, with your works. Um, I'm actually very drawn to your interest in like language and literature and how it plays like, you know, quite a prominent presence um, in your practice. Maybe can you share like... Um, at what point does language enter, you know, um, is, is it at the early stages when you're kind of conceptualizing? Um, does it come towards the end? How do you feel like kind of feeds into or inspires like, um, you know, your process of creating your, your works? I guess the, like, I have a lot of books that like, like quite heavily references like certain literature works so like I think to me it comes from uh, a place when I sometimes I feel that I can't quite articulate like certain certain emotions and certain senses and and like the the words like like this kind of borrowed text in a way uh I'm not speaking in my tongue, but then the the the, the applications in in a way where which I um uh, like sometimes uh, I have certain works that's more literate, like like spelled out and and some that is more like just abstract forms, yeah. But I think like with like. When I find that when when I'm able to relate it to 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 a certain writing, it it I feel I find that it's a moment that everything clicks for me, and when it's when it flows better, so that the in in a way I find that the that that's how I kind of uh have a better sense of what's what's the work is about. So you say that you like to collect quotes. Um, are there other sort of things that you're also very interested in collecting? Yeah, in a way, I, uh, like I have this collection of styrofoam prototypes, like some, some that became work, some that might become work, but it is very much like a collection, like the, like, from time to time, I lay them out like a flow chart, and yeah, and it can be like, uh, like sometimes like you forget what, uh, what, what you had done, and it, it, when I revisit certain forms, and then uh, it kind of inspire like like something else that moves on from there, and and then I create more. Yeah, uh, in terms of collection, like the, the, like when I think of my, my sculptural works, I, I kind of don't see them as individual works, but like a, a, a flow, like, 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 like one work that leads to the next, that leads to the next. Like that's, don't, that's not really a hard line in between each series, like, which is like kind of all my works is about like, like, like objects tittering, like, 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 like being not able to move and like being uh, balanced precariously. Yeah, so it's like amassing this uh, amount of like situations and arrangements of the forms and I think they they it's like the this sense of like sculptural language I find that the more I practice the more it comes 
easily as well. Yeah. Would there be any sort of material that you think you are interested in exploring next or um, anything that you are you know, looking forward to kind of exploring to kind of develop your sculptural language further? Yeah, so far, uh, this show, there are a lot of contrasting elements that are like, like strong, vis strong visual contrast. Yeah, so uh, previously, uh, there was a while that I really liked like the oneness of a single material. So a single stone or like, like making like kind of sort of paintings, but, but no, not, no pencil marks, no, no, it's, it's about mark making, but without any additional mediums, like just like scratching at the surface. Yeah. So like the, with this introduction of another material and like at such strong contrast, I, I do think that it suggests a lot more possibilities, like not necessarily in a way that, uh, like as an extension of this series, but I, I find that I'm open more to the idea rather than sticking it like strictly strictly as uh just the marble just the stones let's talk about the presence of failure or um the potential for failure because it was something that also kind of came up right like in in this show um what what made you think about failure or, or why why is it something that you know you, you feel like you are grappling with? Um, mm. I think personally, just I I tend to be a more anxious person, and I I didn't quite realize it at first. But after a while, like 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 when I look back at my works, so you tend to see some similarities between them, and. Yeah, and when I realized that I, I move more towards that direction, like intentionally, yeah. So, uh, like, my, like, uh, like when I do my works, I don't really relate to, like, uh, personal history, identity, and that stuff. But in a way, I find that the, like certain emotion states uh, that it presents, I, I find that like very deeply personal as well. Yeah, so the, like, like speaking about tension or like the, the possibility of failure, it, it's just a, this general sense of fear and anxiety that, 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 that you might say could be unfounded or or like in a way like when i see the sculptures in this show like like technically they are supposed to be secure they should not drop they should be able to to be in the same state like at least throughout the entire run of the show but at the same time uh there is always that lingering fear and anxiety towards all of these placements and situations, yeah. So do you feel like at any point in time, um, things will reach like an equilibrium? Is, uh, are, you, are you looking or working towards that, finding that equilibrium? In a very broad sense. Yeah, the I like when you talk about mobility and immobility, it's like it's supposed to be two ends of the spectrum, but then the it's always about walking the line between the two ends. Yeah. So I think there are much, like some of the works I've done that that's that certainly is about immobility, about uh about being trapped like lay uh like arrange and stack in a way that they are locked in yeah and 
and there are, there are some forms that are free to move, free to flow. Yeah, so I think it's always a back and forth process. So so that there might be times that is just like perfectly balanced, but but times when it's it feels uh precarious and dangerous. Yeah. So you can share with us like you know what are you looking forward to next? Yeah, so uh like uh in in terms of studio work like the uh like I find that the raw materials itself very much inform and determine what what the final forms look like like if they are restricted by certain size or certain certain like colors and textures and stuff so uh so I might be <laughs> having some problems with sourcing uh like like in the future but I've also amassed like quite uh a few like large blocks of stones that last a while. Yeah, but then the like uh I find that like working within this sense of restriction is uh it brings about another kind of creativity also so like like i i would be interested to see like if i ran up of white marble then <laughs> what else could it be yeah so uh yeah so because i very like a lot of my process is indeed working with like under under the restrictions of of space of time and tools, yeah. So we can look forward to <laughs> a lot more to come. Yeah. Thank you, Sube, for your time. Thanks for sharing so so generously. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.